Ja, Rastafari. And for right here, Celestia, I first is not this time here. Because it is a Sabbath day. So I make myself available to speak to the people, world at large, regardless of nationality <coughs> and race. And the word of God is not limited. But at this time, I want to say in respect to the Sabbath day, glory to word, glory to sound, and glory to power. Glory be to the name of his imperial majesty, Emperor Hail King Selassie I, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, conquering line of the tribe of Judah, power of the Holy Trinity, elect of God, light of the planet Earth, defender of the Christian faith. I have some things to say today. Some of it might be in reflection to things that I've said earlier. And as you notice, I don't even have a book in my hand, but I have enough <coughs> information retained in the memory system that will make it sufficient for I and I to speak to the world at large comfortably, comfortably in the order of theology. Now, it is not my intention to disrespect or to condemn or to ridicule or to disregard others of different faith why I will choose to speak. But really, my concern is for a people that might be ignorant still. Some of them is fast asleep, as I am able to judge. So these are the reasons, are some of the reasons why I choose today and another Sabbath to speak unto the Lord's people. The last video I done I I did for some reason did not go through Maybe it was judged that it was not proper. So I hope today what I will share will not be censored. I want to start off with the man, Melchizedek. I see there are some people that have stagnated themselves through ignorance as to say God can't be a man. But let me look today truthfully. And by the way, why I am prompted to speak today is I have heard by, from my um, representative that ones and ones are asking what happened to the priest or oh, we haven't heard from him anymore so all that is one of the reasons why I'm speaking now so we want to look to the people of the almighty the man Melchizedek now there are some that say God does not have no shape and form and whatsoever but we want to understand that when they say God is a spirit and they that worship him, H-I-M, should worship him in spirit and in truth. So today we want to emphasize and come to the realization of the importance of this word, truth. Now, I am one of those that have a knowledge that is not limiting myself and is limited to the planet Earth. So we look at God Almighty, the spirit, as extraterrestrial. Not of the earth, but of the heavens of heavens. And when we say, for this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, without father, without mother, without beginning of days, nor end of life, that is sufficient for our I know to say, this man, Melchizedek, must be God Almighty, translating himself from the extraterrestrial to the terrestrial, which is this planet Earth. And I look at the attributes, not only without father or mother, because that wouldn't be sufficient to justify him as God, but anyone that is without beginning of days nor end of life is sufficient for I and I to declare that man God Almighty. So we look at Melchizedek dispensation as an apparition, apparition, which means a man that suddenly appear meaning he wasn't fathered or mothered by anyone. No genealogy, no descent, as to say, the source of his origin. But when it is said, made like unto the Son of God, live it, a priest forever. We move now from the dispensation of Melchizedek to the era of the Lamb of God. That would be Isaiah 7, verse 14, that said, Therefore the Lord himself shall give a sign, a virgin shall have a son, and his name shall be called Immanuel, which is likened to Yeshua by the Hebrew language. Now I see right there that the one that is made like unto the Son of God was the same man in replication 
maximizing the birth of the Lamb of God for the sin of salvation, world at large, irregardless of race, geology, nationality, etc. Now, we see again another man, Yeshua, in what they refer to as an immaculate conception. Why we say immaculate here, I would like to stipulate or differentiate the difference of his birth from others. In his birth, the Lord himself, by the power of omnipotence, putting himself from the extraterrestrial, using the womb of St. Mary as a conduit to born or to birth himself into the planet Earth to replace what they refer to as the lamb. So we don't have a four-footed lamb no more. We have the lamb of God as a man, giving salvation first unto the children of Israel and, to the, and then to the world at large. Now, that man is not the man that they show you now as a white man with silky hair, blue eye, and we say recessive genes. And that is the man they call Jesus. Now, that man is not the same man as Yeshua, the son of Mary. Why do I say so? From Melchizedek to Yeshua, Yeshua is described by the scripture, Jeremiah 8, verse 21. For the hurt of the daughters of my people am I hurt. I am black. Black. Astonishment has taken hold upon me. We go further into the doctrine, Daniel 7, verse 9, for justification of the racial biological characteristics of the Lamb of God, a man, son of Mary. It says here, Daniel 7, verse 9, I beheld, which means Daniel observed, until the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days again depicting the Christ, whose clothes was white as snow, but the hair of his head like pure wool. Pure wool. So today now, to justify the difference between the Jesus that been given from the 18th century and is currently here, indifferent to this Christ, the son of Mary. Now, when it says pure wool, what should come in your mind? Out of all the races, genealogies, and the planet Earth, which nation or which race would you justify that carry woolly hair? And that is why we are Rastas. The Rasta man is saying that the only man with the woolly hair is the Negroid people, the continental people from the continent Africa. They are the ones that carry woolly hair. And you can judge for yourself. This doctrine is not for racial superiority nor inferiority, but a racial declared fact. The fact is, Hindus does not carry or don't carry woolly hair. And you must agree to that fact. Chinese, Japanese, Oriental people don't carry woolly hair. And I, 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 I judge you will agree to that. Europeans at large don't carry woolly hair either. They are all silky hair. So when we say Christ is black, it is by this scriptural reference. The last book in the Holy Scripture is Revelation 1. Verse 14, 15, that says, His, which is the Christ, head and his ears, is white as wool. As white as wool. Never leaving the woolly characteristic. His eyes a flame of fire. And his feet as bronze burned in the furnace. So it is clear to I and many others that the Christos of Nazareth, woolly, red eyes and brown skin, could not be the Michelangelo, white Jesus that's been preached for centuries. And that is why we have in the midst of the ocean, Elisel, his imperial majesty, Elisel as a school, a vision, Bible study, prophecy, and Sabbath worship, where I speak from today, expressing myself in the spirit of truth to the people at large to realize that there is a great problem here today. Now, and the reason again why I'm speaking is that God the Spirit is manifested as God the man. God the man. That is why you have the, the grammatical reference as of him, H-I-M. That is, that is obviously a male characteristic. His, he always refer to the man. So for those that say God can't be a man, we say to you today that this man is imperial majesty. You notice it? How far the Christ have reached now? Yeah, from the lamb as a papa to the lion now in palace and grandeur and luxury. So here we are today. His imperial majesty, 
and I think in royalty that is the highest tenancy you could reach. His Imperial Majesty, Emperor, another characteristic here, a title, any man that reached the status of an emperor, that is where it ends. So we have His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Ail Selassie, first, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, as God Almighty in flesh. Now, what do we use to justify this? It is simple for a man like me. We move from Yeshua, Isaiah 7 verse 14, and here again today I supply you a bridge that takes you from Isaiah 7 verse 14, historically, to Isaiah 9, now 6 and 7. So the bridge would be Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28, theologically, to bring you from the dispensation of the Lamb to the Lion of Judah. And it is said in Hebrew 9, verse 28, for Christ, which is Jesus, that was once crucified to bear the sins of many, shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And this is a mystery now of Rastafari, where we are now um, involved or is invited into the order of theology. We put now to the world at large that Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7 needs careful examination and evaluation so when we say for unto us a child is born and to us a son is given and his name shall be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father than the prince of peace that's verse six we claim that to be the birth of lidge tafari in Amoric, lidge is prince tafari is biological lidge tafari the 23rd of July, 1892, Esagora, Ethiopia. Either the ninth or the tenth child of Yishimabe, wife of Rasmokanan. And incidentally, for those that have interest in the history of the Ethiopians, all have born dead by Yishimabe until the birth of Lichtafari, who break a seven-year jolt in Esagora. And here we have the light now shine from Esogora, Ethiopia, to the world at large, into the coronation at the age, at, at the year, 2nd of November, 1930. I believe at that time he was 38 years old, crowning King of Kings. And we want to look today how oh, special this crowning of His Majesty, Haile Selassie the first was, on the 2nd of November, 1930. It was a conspicuous coronation. I use the word conspicuous to say it was a light that was shining all over the world, meaning the invitations were given to the nations at large, England, France, Rome, Belgium, Stockholm, Germany, Italy, Australia, they all came to Addis Ababa on that date for the coron coronation of Haile Selassie, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So I and many others, world at large, declare him divine God Almighty. As to say, there is no other when we say this, it, is seem, it seems like it's a trespass unto the other religions around. But we have learned over the years that we must tolerate others of different faith. And if it is possible, living side by side with them, which is good. And the word would be tolerance. So I and Rastafarian would we tolerate all the religions around and we respect them. But we will not humble ourselves nor bow this truth and this fact that there is no other God other than Ayala Selassie the first, who is king of kings and lord of lords. Now, that might cause a confusion to you. Why? And I don't blame you. And that is why I choose to speak today. It is out of ignorance or a bare-faced lie in the churches that Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords. That needs to be proven to the world. And I challenge today any pastor, including my brethren Jennings, who is renowned in theology, including that man, and I respect him a lot. Prove to me, and he must give me the date, the year, the month, and geographically where the Jesus that him and many others preach that is King of Kings and Lord of Lords, it must be proven now because I and many of us have a name that is given. Hail Selassie first. And bear in mind, Hail Selassie first is not a birth name, as you may not know, but that name was given when the child was 40 days old, baptized in the Ethiopian Kawido, Tawido, which is currently the Orthodox Church, 40 days old would mean um, 
uh, roughly two months old, that means he could not have given himself that name. But he was given it in the Coptic order, Aile Selassie the First, which they translate in the dictionary and encyclopedia to mean the power of the triune or the power of the Trinity, which would maximize um, First John chapter 5, verse 7, that there are three that bear record extraterrestrial, which mean in the heavens, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So, count it not unique that apart from His Majesty Isaiah Selassie I, search for yourself, research, Google, you will never find any other King of Kings, or Lord of Lords, except Isaiah Selassie I. Now, is he dead as you would want to accept, or is he alive even now as I express myself? Now, theologically, we look at Uzziah, H O S C A, Uzziah. Uzziah. There's a scripture in Uzziah that says, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 says, For I shall be unto Ephraim as a lion, not the lamb, that dispensation received and is gone 2,000 years ago. For I shall be unto Ephraim as a lion, and to the house of Judah as a young lion. I, even I, will tear and go away. They shall seek, but none shall rescue. Now look at verse 15 that says, For I shall go and return unto my place until they have acknowledged their offense in their afflictions. You know what affliction means. They shall seek me early. And again I say incidentally in Ethiopia, as you all can see now that Christ is there, I see why he has said in their affliction because the affliction is grievous now because they are the ones that give the man the name Haile Selassie. They are the ones to the Coptic Church, Orthodox Church that have anointed him and crowned him and participated in his crowning as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They are the ones that ferment the atrocity that I refer to as the uprising by some ungrateful and wicked Ethiopians who rise up against the Emperor who have brought Ethiopia out of a medieval concept to a modern equation of any nation on earth. He gave them modern roads, electricity, dams, colleges, university. He gave it to them all. But at the age of 83, what did they say? That's why they must get a beat. And I'm not afraid to speak. They are ungrateful. How shall you bite the hand that feed you? It was them that rise up against the man at the age of 83 because he would not die and say, oh, why, what was the reason for us to go abroad and be educated? And now we are back. He's not sick. It seems like we will have to kill him. That's why the world now look at the man as a dead man. But here it is today. I have a message or a continuation of my message today. I heard that hours ago that the CNN news broadcast that Britain, UK, have banned maybe more than 10 countries already of a new virus that is more wickeder than COVID-19 and it is coming out according to them and that the vaccine won't even be able to deal with this more grievous curse which is coming out. Now, I, 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 I don't see I having enough time today to go further, but what was shown to me, it is simple. This is an Illuminati conspiracy using the scientists scientifically to create what we refer to as a biological weapon. Yes, to afflict the people grievously and to drive fear in their mind to have them turned their way, which means into a new world order. And that is what the Illuminati seek, to have the planet under their full control. And that is why it is necessary for this grievous affliction to kill, destroy, and to quarrel in the people under their control, which is the idea and the opinion of Lucifer, that fallen angel who is the head of the pyramid, Bapomet. But it will be stopped. So whether it be COVID-19, whether it be this new in, in, um, entry, or whatever the name is that will afflict and destroy the people, one of our prophets, the Honorable Sir, Sir Robert Nestor Mali says that no matter of your atomic energy or the weapons that you have made, none of them will be able to stop your time. So it is I and I time now as the children of Israel to look into themselves and to realize who is the king of kings? Who is the king of Israel? Who is the king of Mount Zion? 
It is Emperor El Selassie, and he shall and he will be our only hope of getting out of this captivity. Now I am the priest elect by him, Emperor El Selassie first, in the order of baptism. And that is why I am here on the mountain for 24 years now, waiting not only for these days, but the days that are around the corner when Lucifer curling the people to their materialism, which means if you will not accept the vaccine, if you will not accept the microchip, you won't be able to buy yourself, you won't be able to have nothing materialistically in this planet. I wait for those days, and I am confident that I will abide and be in flesh to receive them. Now, this is hard. There is only one way in to Zion Hill Temple Mount, and it will be by baptism in the name of His Imperial Majesty, Haile Selassie I. We are not speaking of fire baptism as if we're going to strike a lighter, we're going to burn some bush. We are saying submerging in the water where the name Haile Selassie derived from, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, confessing the name of Haile Selassie I. That is the entry for Zion Hill Temple Mount. No other names will be regarded here or accepted. Not even the name of Yeshua, which is the Lamb, is, a, is accepted here for our baptism in this judgment that is to come. So be he here today warned. Time is running out. What you may not know also, in the completion of the conspiracy of the Illuminati, in their affliction, it will only last for three to three and a half years. A tribulation that comment that the world has never seen, nor will see no more. It means to me, if you reject the vaccine, as you can see you now in, in those that reject it, what the governments are doing to those people and what will happen to those that refuse the microchip. You won't have nothing. So can you imagine today, you have to leave your house, you have to leave your car, you have to leave your money in the bank. All of what you have as it is now, if you are not masked or sanitized, you are not allowed in various agencies. So people, wake up and look into these realities that I have choose to share with you today. Fearlessly, there is only one way out. You have to know in your day that His Majesty Ayla Selassie is God Almighty and return Messiah not as the Lamb but the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. Count it not strange in the end of the utterance, Revelation 5 should justify you today because these liars, these famous liars eating the bread of sorrows, telling lies. John said, I saw in the right chapter 5, Revelation verse 1, John said. 2,000 years ago that I saw in the right hand of him that sat upon a throne, a book written within and sealed on the back side with seven seals. And I heard an angel proclaim with a loud voice, who is able to open the book and to lose the seven seals thereof? And we have a question sign. The, the continuation is, but there was no man in heaven nor on earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, not even to look in causing John to cry because he says and I wept much while the virgin was crying and weeping he heard a voice says virgin John stop it weep not behold me look observe eh? the king of kings which is he said behold the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David art prevail to open the book and to loose the seven seas thereof so why are you still telling lies why are you still denying this fact ask all theologian check out the world geography the world history the lion of judah belongs to the children of israel and that is the establishment of the throne in addis ababa ethiopia where emperor hail selassie crowned 225th christian king that sat up on the throne of david from the time of menelik the first yeah uh, son of solomon and queen of ethiopia first christian king while Emperor El Selassie also retained 334 Ethiopian kings from the time of Ori, O-R-I, Ori, the first king of Ethiopia. So El Selassie, numerically, to the order of numerology, 334 would give you the numeral 10. Depleting the zero, become one, which means the first. 225 give you the equation, scientifically and numerically, the number 9. 9 is the equation. 90 degrees, now so east and west revolute the key to the circle. So people, I am ready, sharp and ready to receive you in the mark of the beast. But you have to know now that there is only one name will deliver you from Lucifer. It is highly Selassie the first. What do I represent? 
chariots of fire. Chariots of fire. Chariots of fire. And if you don't know what I mean, look at Isaiah today, chapter 66, verse 15, and you will see, Behold, the Lord shall come with chariots of fire. That is what we read for you in the church. Is call it rapture. But Jesus did not come from 1999. And he can never prove that he is the Christ in this judgment that is set. Again I say, shalom, peace be unto thee. Aye, aye.